Future Vision, the best artificial intelligence apps for iOS and Android. Presented by Matt Harrison, My Sites Not, on the 27th of May 2021. Future Vision. Future Vision is a series of technology events aimed at people living with sight loss. Future Vision is a collaborative project between six local independent sight societies. Site Advice South Lakes in Cumbria, My Site Not, Nottingham, Site Airedale in the Airedale area of North and West Yorkshire, Support for Site in West and South Essex, Site Concern Worcestershire in Worcestershire, and Sutton Vision in the London Borough of Sutton. Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm Tim from Site Advice South Lakes, and there's a new group started. We're the independent site organisations, and we six of us. Um, we've got um, Nottingham, Sutton, London, uh, Worcester, Airedale, which is the Keithley area, which is in Yorkshire, um, Essex, the Chelmsford, Saffron, Walden part, and, and ourselves from South Lakes. Um, we, we're six small organisations. We sort of group together to do um, tech workshops for for our customers because we're, we're small. But, but together, there's six of us, which means we get a, a far better audience. So we're all going to take it in turns over the next few months to do any, a tech event for you. Um, now, the first one is going to be done by Matt from Nottingham. Uh, and Matt is going to do something on apps and some of the new apps or the, or the better apps um, that we, we, we think um, you will enjoy. Um, at the end of Matt's uh, presentation, we will open ourselves up for questions and you can um, unmute yourselves. Okay, and if people can't unmute, I will go around looking for you and, and unmute you. Okay, everybody? So I'm going to mute myself now and hand you over to Matt. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Tim. Uh, morning, everybody. Um, before I, I share my screen, I'll just give you a, a bit of an introduction about me. Um, I'm a site loss advisor with my site, Nottinghamshire. Um, I've been there about six months or so. Um, prior to that, I worked over at the Beacon Centre in Wolverhampton. Um, doing a techie job over there as well. Um, I'm registered severely sight impaired. Um, I have Stargarts, so I, uh, I'm i one of those techie people who actually understands uh, what our needs are, hopefully rather than somebody just talks to us and doesn't fully appreciate our needs. Um, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk about two or three apps that I think are really, really crucial, uh, that have a big part to play in our lives. Um, I'm going to do a PowerPoint presentation alongside it. Don't worry if you can't see it. Um, I, I'm in that club as well. Um, I will read everything that's on the PowerPoint, hopefully. Um, and obviously, we're being recorded, so we've got the chance to review it later on. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just share my screen with you. So here we go. And fingers crossed, that's going to actually play the presentation. There we go. Okay, so uh, as I say, everything that's on the slides, I'm going to read aloud. Uh, there are a couple of short videos along the way, um, mainly for the audio, if I'm honest, uh, because obviously they're apps designed for people who are visually impaired and blind. So what you're looking at actually isn't that important. It's what, we, what we're listening to. Um, but I'll describe what's happening in the videos as well, either before or after, so you've got more of a clue as to what's going on. So basically, um, sorry, somebody else has just entered the room. Okay, so basically, we're going to look at a couple of apps that use what we call artificial intelligence. And this so, suddenly sounds very, very techy, but don't worry about that. It's actually just something that's really, really useful to us uh, with the sensory impairment. So artificial intelligence is when a computer or a phone or a tablet uh, tries to interpret the world around us and gives us more information back. So... The way that the apps we're going to look at today interpret the world, they, they try and give us information about everything from, from text through to identifying colors, uh, identifying people, potentially even uh, talking about emotions of that person if they can detect it on the face. Uh, they can detect light sources. Uh, they can recognize some currency, banknotes in particular. Um, there's all different things that, uh, that we, can, we can use artificial intelligence for. And obviously, a lot of these things here are all, all visual things that we actually struggle with. 
So another one is colors, for example. So the artificial intelligence apps can help um, tell us what color something is. So that's what we're talking about in terms of artificial intelligence today. Um, and the apps we're going to look at mainly today, uh, there's one called Seeing AI, which is a Microsoft uh, made app, and that's available for Apple users. And there's also one called Sullivan Plus, and that's uh, Sullivan, S-U-L-L-I-V-A-N, with the plus sign at the end. And that's available for Apple and Android users. Um, and that's a real big thing for me at the moment. Um, I'm predominantly an Apple user myself. However, a lot of the people we support at my site are Android users, understandably. And we've not really been able to offer them anything to, to match seeing AI for quite some time. And then recently, fairly recently, Sullivan Plus came onto the scene and it's very well received so far. And I just think it's great that we've got a level playing field now that there's something for Am Apple users and something for Android users as well. Um, and just before I, I, I move into the apps in more detail, just to say that obviously there are other things available for artificial intelligence as well. And I'm thinking here about things like the OrCam uh, head, uh, glasses, uh, probably Envision as well, things like that, where again, uh, the computer is trying to read something to you or actually describe something to you. Um, so you can do it on the app, but obviously other, other bits of kit are available. Okay. So the best two apps that I've mentioned already, in my opinion, and I think a lot of other people's opinion as well, are Seeing AI, which is the uh, Apple one, and then one called Sullivan Plus. And on your screen at the moment, you can see the two app logos, just in case you need to find them on the App Store. Okay, what we're going to do here is we're going to take each of these apps in turn. I'm going to talk about what they can do. I'm going to show you two or three 30 second videos for each one of the app in action. And again, it's all about the audio. Uh, we'll talk about what's happening there. I'll talk about the pros and cons of, of each app. And then we'll kind of look at how we can take it a little bit further at the end of it as well. So, okay, why should we use these apps? Well, for me, it's all about independence. I'm a huge advocate of, pe of people trying to become more independent. Um, and that, you know, as someone who's got a, a degenerative eye condition, you know, I, I only I was only diagnosed in my mid thirties, uh, and I'm sort of late forties now. So for me, you know, I was a reader. Uh, I had very very good vision. I just accepted things and just took took for granted my eyesight. Um, and so having lost my sight, I'm still fiercely independent. And I just think that you know, why ask somebody else for help if you can do it yourself? Um, there are also times as we've seen this last year, where you don't necessarily have help on hand. Uh, so maybe you've got a neighbor who helps you and all of a sudden that neighbor can't come into your house. So maybe there's an app out there that can help you do things when normally you'd go and ask for some human assistance. Uh, so I'm a big fan of that. Um, I also think that, um, you know, it's having less things in your pocket. So these apps are very versatile things and it's great that they do lots of different things so rather than having different pieces of technology all in one place that you need to carry around uh, so i'm thinking back to a few years ago when maybe people had a, a particular device that recognized colors uh, and a different device that did something else well all these features are now in one place on the apps uh, so it's a really really handy thing to have i always liken them to kind of swiss army knives they've got lots of different functions for different things but it's all in one place that you carry around uh, i think that's quite a good analogy for these apps again um, the other thing is these these apps are free so start to weigh up the cost of a bespoke um, device that's going to sit on your tabletop and uh, read the post to you when it arrives through the door and it'll do a very good job at that don't get me wrong but you have to you know you're paying a lot of money for that device it sits on the table and it just does that one thing these apps are free they will read the post to you in the same way that your, your OCR camera will, uh, but it will also do other things as well. And it's all in one place. Um, so it's a kind of a no risk situation. I think they're fairly simple to use these apps as well. Um, so I think there's a lot going for these, these two apps in particular. Okay, so let's look at seeing AI first. So this is the one that's for Apple, uh, Apple only. So iOS devices, so the iPhones and the iPads, things like that. So within Seeing AI, what you have, you have what they call channels. And the channels basically are the different functions that the app will perform. Um, and they're kind of laid, laid out at the bottom of the screen in a little horizontal menu. 
so if you do have some site, you can just navigate to the one you want. I'll show you a picture of the, of the screen in a minute. They have little icons to represent things like text recognition and people recognition and stuff like that. Um, but obviously, if you're using VoiceOver, then you can voice over to these different uh, functions with a single vertical flick of one finger. So that will jump between the different channels, as they call them. Now, the channels that you have within Seeing AI uh, are you have a channel called Short Text, which will read text to you on the fly. So as you're, as you're holding the phone, if it sees text, it will read it aloud to you. No need for you to interact any more than that in terms of pressing a button to capture an image or anything like that. You just literally hold your phone over the text. It will read it aloud. I should say here that both of the first two channels, which are short text and then document, we're talking about formatted text only. So anything that's a good, clear printed font. So not handwriting at this stage. So you have the short text option, which I think is brilliant for the, the, the quick things. So when the post comes through the door, you've got three or four envelopes. I hold my phone over the envelopes and it will tell you who the post is for and I can sort it out for the family. So I don't read anybody else's post. Um, or more importantly, I get to read my own post rather than somebody reading it to me. So that's your short text option. There's also one called document reader. As the name suggests, it reads a whole page at once to you. And uh, what you do there is you have to hold your phone over the document. It gives you instructions to tell you to move it a bit left or right or raise it a little bit higher if it can't see all the edges of the document. Then it will take a photo for you just by holding your, your hands still. Um, that's a brilliant thing as well for, for large piece of information. So what I would do is I would use the short text option to find out that the post is for me. Then when I've opened the envelope and flattened the, the letter out on the table, I would then use the document reader to read the actual letter inside the envelope to me. I've also got a, a, a nice whizzy um, uh, phone stand that points the camera straight down at the table. So you can actually just slip it under the table, if need, under the document reader if needed. Uh, so, you know, a phone and a good, a good stand equals a document reader. And it's much cheaper than buying a bespoke document reader. Okay, so the other channels you have on here, we have uh, the you know, one to recognize people. Uh, so it will try and take a photograph of a person and it will try and guess their gender and their age and possibly their emotion. So it might say a face looking neutral or it might say looking happy or looking sad or angry, something like that. It's got a very basic range of emotions, uh, but it, it is quite good. Uh, if you're practicing that, uh, be careful who you point it at because you might offend them in terms of the age thing. Um, but if you tell people that if they smile, it takes a few years off them. So um, that's definitely something to bear in mind. If you're having your photo taken with Seeing AI, uh, smile nicely and it'll knock a few years off. Okay, you've also got on here, we have a product uh, recognition channel where we're going to scan a barcode. We're going to talk about that in more detail towards the end of this presentation because there's a lot more we can do with that. But that's a really, really handy thing to have. Uh, you have a scene preview where uh, you take a photograph of, of whatever's in front of you and it will try and describe that to you. Again, this, is, this technology is only as good as the database, uh, so what it looks for. Uh, but for what I've seen so far, it's pretty good. I've also used that to look at the front of birthday cards. And in some cases, it has been able to describe the picture on the front of the birthday card to me as well. Um, you have a color recognition channel. That's self-explanatory. You point it at the color, uh, tap, and it will tell you what color it's pointing at. Really good for trying to match clothes and, and, and things like that, maybe. Um, and you have a light detection mode. So if you're totally blind and... Either you want to make sure maybe your curtains are shut or you, the light is turned off. If you live with someone who's sighted, who turns the light on and off. Uh, it, by, by moving the, the, the phone around the room, it, the light, the, the, it will play a tone and the tone gets uh, higher the brighter the light it's pointing at. So if you point it towards your window and it's very, very bright, it's a very high tone, you know that it's a very bright light. The chances are your curtains aren't closed, so don't get changed. Uh, but you, things like that are quite handy. And it's all in one place on one app. And as I say, you just flick through with one finger, a vertical flick to go between these different channels. So flicking up and flicking down will move left and right through your different channels. So it'll go from short text to document to product and so on like that. So that's how you navigate through with voiceover. Uh, as I say, if you have sight, then there's a little kind of series of icons at the bottom of the screen. And I think on the next slide, we actually have a picture there, just a screenshot of my phone uh, using Seeing AI 
So for those of you that can't see, what we've got here, uh, there's a little bar at the top of the screen, which has got things like menu and a help button on it. Then the majority of my display is taken up with the camera view, and it's currently looking at my, my large print diary. And then underneath that, <coughs> we, excuse me, we've got a few different apps laid out, and we can uh, a few different channels, sorry, uh, laid out. And we've got text, document, product, and person are the ones that I can see there. Uh, so there's a few different channels. Uh, and that's kind of the interface that you work with most of the time. There is other stuff you can do in the menus, but most of what you do on a daily basis is just found within these, this channel list at the bottom here. Okay, right. Video time. This video is about 20, 30 seconds long, nothing else. Um, for those of you that can't see what's going on, I'm holding my phone over a yogurt that I've just got out of the fridge. Now, if you're totally blind, uh, yogurts, th this is a Muller fruit corner. They all feel the same, so you might want to find out what flavor it is. Um, so this is me using the short text function within Seeing AI, and I'm just literally hovering my phone over the yogurt pot so it can read the label. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good, so I'll, I'll let you listen to this for a few seconds. Corner, black mulker, corner yogurt, delicious, blackberry, raspberry, no artificial, preservatives, V sweetener. Okay, hopefully you all heard that okay. Um, so it said, it said Mulker at first, and that's because the, the, the font for Muller is a, a little bit of a stylized font. Uh, but eventually said Muller, Corner, and then it said whatever flavor it was, Blackberry and Raspberry or something, uh, no preservatives. At that stage, that's all I needed from that yogurt. Um, I didn't want to know about a sell-by date or use-by date. I just wanted to know what flavor it was. We'll talk about use-by dates uh, at the end of this presentation. So that's the short text in action. And it's the same principle, as I say, when the post comes through the door, or if it's just a very, very brief bit of text that you want to read, just hold your phone over it, keep your phone quite still, and it'll recognize the text and start to read it aloud. Uh, if you move away and come back into, into view of the text, it will start and stop. So you just need to be quite, quite careful with that, but you'll soon get the hang of that. So that's the short text version. The next video is uh, the document. So what happens here is I've got a simple recipe, um, just plain piece of white paper and, and a, a simple font on it, I think. Um, and I'm just holding the phone over the recipe. And what you'll hear is you'll hear the app, because I've got voiceover enabled, you'll hear it talking to me as well, saying things like um, left edge not visible and right edge not visible. And I know that if the left, left edge isn't visible, I need to move my phone a little bit to the left. And if it says you know, corner's not visible, I need to raise my phone slightly higher, and that way it can see more of the document in one go. When you get to the stage where it can see all the corners, it will say, hold steady, and you hold your phone steady, it will take the photo automatically. But there is also a capture button on the screen that you can navigate to, and you can tap the capture button to take a photo if you don't want to have all the corners visible. So if you wanted to zoom in on something in particular, you can still use the document reader without it seeing the edges of the document. But here's, a, again, a very brief video um, with the, the recipe. Bottom left corner not visible. Left take picture, button. Take. Processing. Play, button. Pause. Body, font family, Arial, font size, 12 points, delicious black. So basically what you heard then was you heard the, the, the the app gave us instructions saying bottom left corner not visible, hold steady, take picture, things like that, and then it takes the picture. What then happens on the screen is it then jumps to a new a new display, which is just a um, the text that it has taken from that document. So then you can work your way through it. You can either just play the whole thing, or you can work your way through with voiceover line by line if need be. Um, you can also save the text from here uh, and then kind of copy and paste it. So you can then open the notes app up, for example, and save it into your notes app, which can be quite useful. Uh, so an example of that would be, you get a hospital letter through, through the door, you use Seeing AI to the short text to read, to find out the letters for you, use a document reader to then read that whole appointment letter to you. And within that, you might have uh, instructions on which part of the hospital to visit. So what you could do then from there is you can copy and paste this text and save it into your notes app, for example. Uh, so you've got reference to that on the day when you're actually at the hospital and you can't remember where to go. Uh, that's just a thought anyway. Uh, but yeah, that's the document reader. And the final one for seeing AI um, is the scene preview. 
So what I did here was I'm recording the screen of my phone. So again, you get all the interaction with, uh, with seeing AI and I'm literally sat where I'm sat now and I pointed the camera at my, at my desk and let's see what happens there. Scene preview. Channel. Scene preview. Adjustable. Take picture. Button. Processing. A computer on a desk. Okay, so a computer on a desk. So it's absolutely perfect. It's exactly what it's looking at. So it's looking at my computer and keyboard on the desk. Um, so, you know, you've got a scene preview there. So if you wanted to find out more about your surroundings, you will get very basic information back from the app. Uh, it can be quite useful. As I say, I've used it to try and interpret like photographs on postcards and things like that. And it's not too bad. Um, it depends on whether it's a painting or whether it's an actual photograph, obviously, whether it can recognize it. Uh, but it's worth giving it a go. And as I say, you might you might find it kind of describes I don't know thirty percent of your Christmas cards to you. Uh, but what you can then do, obviously, is use the other features within the app, such as the handwriting tool, which I'm not going to show you today. Uh, but there's a handwriting recognition thing in here as well. So potentially that could read the inside of the greetings card to you as well. So the handwriting tool, I think, is great. It's not perfect. It's dependent on people's handwriting. My handwriting before I lost my sight was absolutely appalling, so it probably would never read it, and it certainly won't read it now when I write over the top of what I've just written. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's there. So for me, a couple of years ago, uh, using Seeing AI uh, with the handwriting channel was the first time that I'd read my own birthday cards for a few years. So I, I kind of like that. I think that's, a, you know, that's given me back my independence and that, and that privacy that you might want as well around something like a personal letter. Uh, so yeah, so that's another channel worth worth mentioning. Okay, I'm going to jump across to Sullivan Plus now, uh, so you can compare and contrast contrast the two together. So Sullivan Plus is kind of the Android equivalent of Seeing AI. I have no idea why Microsoft chose only to release Seeing AI on iOS. Um, the mind boggles with that one, but there you are. Uh, so Sullivan Plus has come on the scene, and this is available for Apple and Android. So, you know, it, it, it covers the market, which is really, really good. So you have modes of operation rather than channels. So within Seeing AI, we had channels, we have modes and functions uh, within uh, Sullivan Plus. It's just a different word for the same, same idea, really. Um, what I like about this one in particular is that I, I think there's a few things. You've got some good channels as well. Um, there's a few more channels in the round scene AI, but it is missing one of the main channels. And I'll come back to that in a minute. So it has a feature called uh, AI mode. So artificial intelligence mode. So what that's doing is it's looking for three different things. And I think it looks for text, uh, faces and uh, a scene. So you can take one photograph and then you can navigate between three different features which I think is really, really nice because they're all in one place rather than three separate channels, which you would, you would have on Seeing AI. Um, it's very similar to Seeing AI in terms of the layout, and I'll show you a picture of that in a minute and describe that to you. Um, it's got channels for um, AI. Uh, we've got text. We've got, um, bear with me a second. We've got image description. We've got color recognition. We've got a light detection thing again. Uh, we've got a magnifier, which we don't have in Seeing AI. And quite often people will have a magnifying app separately. Well, there's no need for that now because there's one within Sullivan Plus. So that's, that's a really, really nice touch, I think. Um, you can also, it's got a PDF reader. So if you have a PDF document saved to your phone, it will read that aloud to you. You can also save your notes uh, from a scan. So you, you, you would scan the, the document in the way we did with Seeing AI, but you then have the option to save it into a notes part within the app. So there's a couple of things that don't, that don't exist in Seeing AI. And a biggie for me as well is the video calling option. So it can take you straight through to your contacts and, and help you make a video call to somebody. So if you get totally stuck and if the app won't help you out, you can always phone a friend. And I like that. I think that's really nice. It's kind of like a personal Be My Eyes. And if we have time, we can talk about Be My Eyes today. Um, but yeah, so that's Sullivan Plus. And again, this is free, uh, Apple and Android. Uh, seeing it now is also free. So there's no cost for these things, which is great. Okay, here's a quick look at the interface for you. So very similar to Seeing AI. We've got a, a, a little short bar at the top. And then the majority of the display is taken up by the image that the camera is looking at, which again is my large print diary. And then at the bottom, we literally have some very large 
uh, icons. We've got a left and a right. And in the middle, we have the capture button, uh, which is how you take a photograph. So the left and right, the left one takes you to the menu and the right one takes you to the functions. And to be honest, that's a little bit confusing because they're quite similar. The menu takes you through to all the different channels or, or modes. The functions menu takes you through to a few more bits and bobs on the other side. Um, but you'll soon get the hang of that. Uh, and it could well be that you find that all you need is the artificial intelligence mode because the top three things that you want it to do are read text, describe a scene, and maybe, maybe uh, describe a person's face as well. So that's, that's the, the interface for Sullivan Plus. So very, very similar to seeing AI. Okay, so a couple of short videos here of me using Sullivan Plus. The first one is me using the magnifier option, which if you're not sighted, this isn't going to mean a great deal to you. Uh, basically, I've got a low vision booklet, like a test booklet with, with short paragraphs in different font sizes. Um, it focuses mainly on font size 12, and then towards the end when the magnification goes up, a lot. Uh, we fo focus on font size six. But for those of you who have some vision, hopefully you'll, you'll be able to see how it works. Within the magnifier function, you also have an invert option as well. So if you prefer white text in a black background, you can tap on a button and it'll do that for you as well. Here, here's the short video anyway. Sullivan Plus, Sullivan Magnifier, heading. Magnification, 100%. Zoom out, 100%. Zoom in, 100%. Button. Zoom in, 150%. Zoom in, 225%. Zoom in, 338%. Zoom in, 506%. Zoom in, 759%. Zoom in, 1,139%. Zoom in, 1,600%. Okay, so you can hear my voiceover uh, talking me through the, the slider bar or the plus and minus, I think it is on, on there, to, to change the magnification strength. But it went up to something ridiculous like 1,600%. Obviously, you know, font size six at 1,600%, it's going to get a bit shaky and a bit blurred. Uh, but you're never going to need it to those extremes. And if you do need it to those extremes, then the chances are you probably need to use the text reading rather than the magnification option. Uh, but yes, yeah, so you've got a magnifier, uh, color recognition. Uh, I just got some, got, got some of the ironing out, actually. So I, I should have done this after I ironed it rather than before. Uh, so apologies for the wrinkled jumpers. Uh, but here we are uh, scanning across a couple of items of clothing and a piece of paper, just a white piece of paper, which it didn't actually pick up very well. Uh, more on that in a minute. Uh, but this is the colour recognition uh, feature. So, button. Actions available. Vivid so Vivid Red for a jumper, that's fine. Strong blue. strong blue for a very blue t-shirt and then this is a white piece of paper <laughs> white piece of paper and it said pale purple Capture. Button. Light purple. okay so it was a pale it was a plain piece of white paper face down on the bed and i it got we got pale purple then i lifted the cam camera away slightly and we got light purple because more light was coming into the into the image for it it still said light purple it's just a white piece of paper so it does demonstrate how lighting conditions are really important if you would if you wanted to really check a color you need to go somewhere with with good lighting or even get some task lighting involved uh, but for other things it worked well uh, had i had this app a few years ago it would have stopped me going to work with one black shoe and one brown shoe uh, you know, so that it would have earned, earned, it, earned its money, even though it's free, it would have earned its, its keep just by that alone for me, rather than having a day of ridicule at work. Um, but yeah, so there's colour recognition there, so you get an idea. Now with the Sullivan Plus app, a lot of it, you, you do have to find that capture button and then tap that button to take the photograph. Um, so a steady hand is kind of required for both of these apps, but a little bit more for Sullivan Plus, because with the Seeing AI, a couple of those... Um, the recognition things were, were automatic. Okay, uh, oh, one more video from Sullivan Plus, and this was Sullivan Plus, uh, and it's an image description. So you'll hear me navigate to the image description mode. Again, I think it's me taking a picture of my desk. Let's see. Menu screen, button, menu screen. Selected, AI mode, button, text recognition, button, face recognition, button, image description, button, image description. Sullivan, image description, heading. Capture, button. Actions available. Capture. It seems like a desktop computer sitting on top of a wooden table. Okay, it seems like a desktop computer sitting on top of a wooden table. Well, that's exactly what it is. So, you know, again, perfect description. 
uh, they'll always say things like it seems or it may be because they can't commit because uh, it's artificial intelligence and it, it's only ever 90 odd percent accurate or 80 percent accurate, but it, it's pretty good. OK, so you heard me navigate through the menu option there to find that particular option. I could just have taken the picture and then used the AI mode because scene description is one of those three three features that's, that's covered there as well. OK, so let's talk about pros and cons of both these apps. So seeing AI for me, the, con, the, the pros of seeing AI, are, I think it's very simple to use. I think I think it's great. Um, um, I think the interface is just quite quite intuitive that you work your way through the channels. And the same applies to Sullivan Plus to a certain extent as well. Um, and I love the product uh, recognition app. We didn't look at that here. We're going to look at that in the next video in a minute uh, where you scan a barcode and it, and it tries to tell you what that, what that product is. I think that's a winner. I think that's something that's really important to us in various situations. Um, downside to seeing AI... Um, No magnification thing. That would be something I'd like to chuck in there. Um, you've got two different channels for your text. So you have a different handwriting channel and a formatted channel. So you've got to jump between the two, whereas in Southern Plus, they're both in one place. Uh, that's another thing for me. Um, and what else have we got? Um, bear with me just a second. I can't see what I'm doing on that one. Do you want me to read okay. the no, you're, sorry, it's image description. Um, the image description, you can you can also do it from your camera roll, and that can be a little bit tricky because you've got to find it in the menu, so it's not kind of a channel. So in addition to taking a picture of whatever's in front of you, you can go through to your camera roll, browse for a photo, and then get it to describe it. It's a great feature. It's just hidden away in the menus. Um, so that's something to bear in mind. But I think with all these things, they've tried to put the most, the most simple things on the, on the interface and then other stuff is, is buried a bit deeper if you want to take it onto the next level. Um, but I, I love my scene AI. I use it a lot. Uh, I'm also really warming to Sullivan Plus. Um, it took me a while. I thought it was a bit clunky at first. So I've actually put on here one of the things I don't like is sometimes it's a little bit clunky and I don't think it works perfectly. Um, but there's a lot going for it as well. So first of all, it's available for Android. Let, you know, let's, let's rejoice that for the Android users because they were left out for quite a while with, without some, having to pay a lot of money for something. Um, I like the AI mode in particular. I think that's really clever that you can take one picture and then get three different responses about that picture. You know, the, the, like I say, the scene preview, the, the, the person, the facial preview, and also the text all in from one captured image is really, really clever. I think that's really, really good. Um, I love the magnification side of it as well, because again, it's either a different app you have, you have to have, or it's a magnifier in your pocket, be that video or, or manual. So it's one less thing to carry around there as well. Uh, so there's quite a bit going for it. I think it has nice large icons as well. Um, I think they're quite quite nice chunky icons and, 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 and high contrast text on there as well. So if you do want to use some site, I think that's quite useful. Uh, the cons for me, I didn't get on well with the light detection thing on Sullivan Plus, but it could be down to my phone because not every phone has a particular sensor on it that you would need to detect light. So that's something to bear in mind. I've got an iPhone 11, so I've got a fairly up-to-date phone, um, which should have all the whistles and bells on it. It didn't do very well with the light thing. It, it, I pointed it at, at the window and it said bright, but that was as much as it, as it gave me back. Whereas I think there's a feature within the light detection mode where it gives you a lot more information than that if you have a particular sensor on your phone. So that's something to bear in mind if that's one of your key must-haves. It might be worth looking at looking at Sullivan Plus and seeing AI and seeing which does the best job there. Um, I, I also like the idea that the fact you can save your scanned text into a note within the app rather than to go to a different app. I think it's nice to have it all in one place. That's something just to mention as well. Um, yeah, I, I, there's not a lot wrong with it. I, I think I found that trying to recognize the image from my gallery, from my phone camera roll, was a little bit buggy as well. Something went wrong with that. So I, I, I think in the, like, the last time I tested this, which is like a few weeks ago, there were a couple of things that I thought needed sorting out, ironing out. But again, it's a free app and it's absolutely brilliant for nothing. So um, for both these apps, you know, the, the pros far outweigh the cons. The cons are me being very picky as a technical person and wanting something to be absolutely perfect. Um, <clears throat> so that, that's my kind of information on, on those two apps. I'm going to move slightly away from that now in a bit of a sideways move here. So we've mentioned that seeing AI 
So the Apple devices has the barcode product recognition app, uh, recognition channel. That's amazing. So basically it's looking for a barcode. So you turn a tin round in your hand at your cupboard and when it starts to see a barcode, it'll beep, just move it ever so slightly and then it'll just ping. The chances are it will see the barcode before you even know it's found it. And then it'll start to try and analyze that barcode. So it's got a database somewhere in the background. Uh, so you need to be online to use it. And basically it will say, you know, Heinz baked beans and however many grams it is or something like that. So you know what's in your tin. I absolutely love this. I think it's really, really important for us that we've got the ability to recognize what's in our cupboard uh, independently. It won't recognize everything. If you've got a weird and wonderful brand, the chance that it won't pick it up. But most mainstream products are in there as well. So it is it is fairly, fairly comprehensive. Um, it's very, very quick. It's, it's instant. So there's no hanging around while it analyzes things. It's, it's very, very quick indeed. So what I tend to do is I use I would use the barcode scanning app from, from Seeing AI if I'm out in the shop or if I'm in the cupboard at home. So in the kitchen downstairs, we've got, uh, I'm vegetarian, we've got a tin of baked beans, but we've also got a tin of those baked beans with the sausages in for the kids. I want to make sure I get the right one, um, you know, or a more extreme example is the difference between a tin of baked beans and a tin of, a tin of cat food because one's lovely on toast, the other one isn't quite as nice. So, you know, basically this is a way of finding out what's in that tin. You could use either of the apps we've talked about to try and read the label, but because the tin is cylindrical and sometimes uh, the, the branding means it's got a fancy font, it might not read it perfectly. You might get enough information from it, but it might not read it perfectly. Um, so scanning the barcode is the most accurate way of finding out what's in your hand. Uh, I used it the other week. I had to go to the supermarket last minute. We'd started making tea, realized we'd run out of pasta sauce. So I ran around to the supermarket uh, and I was faced with a shelf full of Dolmio and they're all slightly different. They've all got different things in them. And I had no idea what to do because they all felt the same. They all looked the same to me in terms of just being a jar full of red stuff. So I scanned the barcode and I got the one I wanted, second, you know, second one off the shelf. So it's quite handy for stuff like that. But what we can do as well is we can look at how we take barcodes one stage further. To do this, you need a third app. So you need an app called Speech Sticker. And I think it's written all as one word. So when you're looking for it on the app store, uh, type Speech Sticker in possibly without a space, you should pick it up. If you can't find it, let me know. My email address at the end of this presentation and I will send you a direct link to the, to the app. Speech Sticker lets you record a voice message into your phone that is then triggered by a barcode. I think it also, speech sticker also does QR codes as well. So basically what that means is we're turning our phone into the RNIB pen friend, if you like, uh, it works in exactly the same way. Well, pretty much the same way as a pen friend. And that's, you're gonna scan something, you're gonna get a message back. So if you're in the supermarket, uh, sorry, if, you, if you've got your shopping home and you've got sighted support, here's the time to add further information to that, to that tin or that, um, or that bottle of milk, whatever it might be. And I've um, got a video for you to watch now. It's about five minutes long. It talks you through both the Seeing AI product recognition using the barcode, and then it shows you how to use Speech Sticker to record a message onto that same barcode. So we're using one barcode for two different purposes. Uh, if this needs explanation at the end, give me a shout, but let's just watch the video first. Hi, in this short video, we're going to look at two free iPhone apps and see what we can do with barcodes on products uh, if we're visually impaired or blind. Now, the first thing we need to do with the barcode is actually use it to identify what the product is. So we're going to use an app from Microsoft called Seeing AI, which is a very versatile app. It can do things like recognizing text, reading handwriting, trying to describe a picture to you or a scene outside or in the house, uh, but it also has a channel that can recognize most barcodes from, from familiar products. So we're going to use that to scan the barcode of a product I have here, and then we'll find out what it is. So the first thing we need to do is open up the Seeing AI app, and then we need to navigate to the product channel. So it knows it's looking for a barcode or QR code. Open Seeing AI. Seeing AI menu button. Okay, now let's find the product channel. I think it was barcodes. It did, I'm not sure about, uh, about QR codes actually. Channel, short text, document, product. Okay, so here's a product, and there's my mystery product here. And what you would do basically is you rotate round 
until it sees the barcode. You hear that short beep, then that means it, it spotted the barcode. So if I go back the other way, it should find the barcode quite quickly. Processing. Cancel. Button. Cravendale Pure Filter Skimmed Milk 1L. Okay, so one litre of pure filtered Cravendale skimmed milk. So if you're blind, that's absolutely fantastic. And I'll help you out in shops and supermarkets. It'll help you identify items in your fridge or in your cupboard at home. Uh, and that, to be honest, if you just want to identify the product, is probably all you're going to need. However, think about this. It's a pint of milk. It, it's going to go out of date at some stage. And it might be useful to know when it goes out of date. You've got a couple of different options. One is to use the Be My Eyes app, which will connect you with a sighted person. And they can tell you by reading what's on your screen when your milk goes out of date. But if you want to be a bit more independent, and if you maybe have some help or knowledge in the first place to know when it goes out of date, so if you've got someone sighted who helps you when you put your shopping away, and they could say to you, this pint of milk goes out of date on the 28th of, of May, then what we can do is we can use a second app, scan the barcode again, and then record an audio message into our phone, which will be triggered every time the app reads that barcode. And I'll demonstrate that for you now. So this app is called Speech Sticker. And again, it's a free app. It's available definitely for Apple and I think for Android as well. Open Speech Sticker. Selected. Speech Sticker. Scan barcodes with the camera. Button. Okay. So when the app first comes on, the camera is launched. It's going to start looking for a product. Click okay? to start recording. Click again to stop. It's just spotted something. It's spotted the barcode somewhere else. Let's uh, let's go back. Right. Let's find the barcode on the milk here. Okay. So. Okay. So now it needs me to record in my audio message, which in this case is just going to be a description of what the product is and the use by date. Skimmed milk goes out of date on May the 28th. Recording stopped. Okay. Save, save that message. Message has been saved. You save the message, it then goes back to your Select camera mode. And let's find that barcode again one, now. One. Skimmed milk goes out of date on May the 28th. Okay, and it's that simple. Obviously, I can go back and re-record over that barcode. So if I get the Cravendale milk again next time, uh, rather than giving that same message out, I can re-record it and put in the new use by date for the new bottle of milk. Uh, but it's a really, really handy way of using barcodes and attributing a voice message to them. It works in the same way as the RNIB pen friend, essentially, that you're going to scan something and it's going to give you an audio message. And obviously, the message is saved on your phone as well. Uh, what you can do if you want to take this further is you could cut a barcode off a box of cereal or, or anything at all or print them off the internet because you can get generic barcodes on the internet. And I've got one stuck on my washing machine, for example. And when I scan that barcode, it tells me how many times to turn the dial for different wash cycles, uh, which means that I can be a bit more independent in doing my laundry as well. And that is two great uses of barcodes for people who are visually impaired or blind. Hopefully you heard that okay. Um... So just to recap on that briefly, you've got the app called Speech Sticker. You scan a barcode, any barcode. It then lets you record a voice message into your phone. And whenever it sees that same barcode again, it then plays back that same voice message. And that's all there is to it. So like I say, um, use by dates on milk. So at the time of putting something in the fridge, it might have a week to run on it. Uh, but you you might forget that over the week and you might not have sighted support around afterwards. So basically, it's just a way of having a little auditory prompt for yourself. Uh, but you might also want to use it for things like um, prompts elsewhere. Hence why I've got the barcode on the washing machine. Tell me how many times to turn the dial for the different wash and dry cycles, basically. Um, it would be remiss of me not to mention Be My Eyes. I just think it's an amazing app. Um, if you don't know about Be My Eyes, it's a free app. Uh, you register as a, as a either a sighted volunteer or as someone with sight loss who needs support. Um, you tell them what language you speak and what time zone you live in uh, so that it can always connect you with somebody, a volunteer who lives in the same time zone and speaks the same language, both of which are extremely handy. Um, so basically what happens is um, you, you've got one big button on the Be My Eyes app uh, as, a sight, as, as a someone with sight loss. 
you tap on that button, it connects you with the first available volunteer. There are 4,700,000 and something thousand volunteers around the world at the moment. So take that in, 4,700,000 volunteers. Um, and basically it connects you and it uses the rear, ca rear view camera on your phone uh, to be your eyes. And the person who's in the phone can see what you're looking at through the camera. And then they say to you, you know, what, how can I help you? And you say, what, what date, uh, what date has this yogurt got on it? Or when does my milk go out to date? Or do my shoes match? Anything like that, you know? And then they'll say, okay, move the phone a bit left and I'll have a look for you. Go a bit closer. They give you little instructions like that. And then they basically just look at what's on your display and they interpret it for you. So Be My Eyes is amazing. Um, there's also now a specialized help button on there as well, which is quite a new feature. Uh, so you can go into that and you can say, I want help with technology. Uh, I think Microsoft are in there as an option. Um, or it could be you want help with uh, personal health. And you go into the personal health section. Uh, there's somebody from NHS who will talk you through the lateral flow test if you want to, be, to do your lateral flow test this way. Really, really useful. That you know, and they'll, they'll tell you what's in your hand and and which bit to put where, and uh, and how to do the lateral flow test. And then they'll say, right, phone back in half an hour. We'll scan the scan the strip together, and I'll tell you what your result is. So there's stuff like that which is so important at the moment, uh, and really, 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 really good. Uh, so that's on there as well. Uh, so be my eyes if you don't know about it. Uh, just download it. It's a free app. You never get the same volunteer twice because there are so many volunteers around. Um, three of my colleagues who are cited are Be My Eyes volunteers, and uh, they only ever had one call each in a couple of years. So it's it's not that you get inundated. So don't ever feel that you're you're going to be bothering the same person again. You won't be. Uh, and they're all signed up as volunteers, so you're not bothering them at all. So Be My Eyes is 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 fabulous as a, as a final thing. Okay. Uh, before we all kind of come back together, uh, my email address is here. For those of you who can't see it, it's Matt, M-A-T-T-H. That's Matt Harrison. So Matt H at my site, knots, N -O -T -T -S .org uk. So if you have any questions after today, or if you'd like a copy of my presentation, I'll send it out as a PDF file. Uh, if you want a PDF of my presentation, I'll happily send that out to you. So please just get in touch and email me. Um, but I'm not sure what time for questions or not now. Have we got time for questions, Tim? Yeah, I think we'll have a couple. I mean, we're running out of time. That's fine. We'll have a couple of questions. If anybody wants to unmute themselves, that's absolutely fine. Uh, thank I'll, you, Matt. That sorry, I've got to share my screen as well. So, uh, yeah. So, if people want to unmute themselves. Excellent. Uh, yeah, this is Dennis Friedman. I don't, can you hear me? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, that was absolutely amazing. Um, <laughs> I, I'm very up on all this stuff, mm -hmm. but um, I hadn't heard of Bar Sticker. It is on the App Store. You just type the word in. Um, but I'd like to give you a tip um, that I think is quite life-changing with uh, Sullivan Plus. Um, instead of messing around trying to find that catcher button, you can use the volume up or volume down button okay. on your phone, and it means it does it instantly. Thank you, Dennis. That's the volume button up and down, you say? Yeah. Up or down. Either one or, or, or the down. other. Oh, okay. Up yeah. Or down. okay. And you yeah. just literally press it and it just it just does it. And you can the other thing as well is that if you don't like the recognition or whatever it's giving you, you can just do it again. No, you know, just within seconds and it'll just or a second even and it will just retake the picture. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. It's really good. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I liked about the, this is Tim from Science Advice. I like the way that um, you can use combinations, can't you, with artificial intelligence. I mean, Matt used Siri, uh, you use seeing AI and, and, and speech sticker. You know, it, it's, it's finding clever combinations now, isn't it? It's not just the app anymore. It's also how can you use these combinations to, to improve things and, and help your independence. Yeah, that's true. So there's Siri, there's voiceover or talk back, and then there's the apps themselves. So yeah, all, all in one place. I think the thing for me as well is that, you know, stick more stick more apps on your phone because it doesn't weigh anymore. <laughs> it's not like you can't, you know, like in the old days, you can get an extra book, you've got one extra book to carry around with you. Well, you know, stick an extra app on your phone doesn't, doesn't alter the phone, doesn't weigh anymore. So just, just stick them on and give them a go. Hi, my name is Pierre. Um, I'm a new um, listener. I'm on my phone. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Um, I had a couple of questions. It sounds good to me. Um, I've been blind four years, and I'm completely blind. 
Um, and I've got two hobbies. <laughs> Uh, the, one of the, or some of my hobbies too. One of them is uh, music technology, and the other one is walking. And the music technology thing is like, how do you think it might work reading something like a synthesizer or a LCD screen? And the walking question is, I heard there's GPS has now gone down to three. It's a completely different topic, but GPS has now gone down to three meters by three. So will there ever be an app which can walk me around the golf course near my house across open land and fairly accurately take me to, you know, a path? Uh, uh, I'm coming there. Again, combinations, isn't it? I and mean, I can't name the apps, but there's some yeah. apps that tell you where you are. There's some apps that yeah. tell you there's objects or slopes. And I don't know what the combinations are, by the way. But I don't know if one app that does everything. Yeah, I mean, to me, to me Tim, I'd, I'd look at Soundscape from Microsoft, which is a good... Have you, have you, are you an iPhone user, Pierre? Um, I have an iPad. iPad, okay. Yeah, so, I mean, in, uh, what I was looking for was... Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess... Sorry, sorry, continue, sorry. Just I, I was just going to say, so, Soundscape's an app for interpreting what's around you. Um, yeah. I would use that in combination with things like Google Maps and Apple Maps just to get you somewhere in the first place. Um, yeah. But then with Soundscape and other apps, you can drop a pin or you can put a voice marker on somewhere. So you can actually say you can record a voice message in uh, that says, you know, that you're, you're close to a particular object or, or landmark that you, you, you navigate by. Uh, so that's quite yeah. a nice thing. Uh, big, bigger apps are like Blind Square. Lazarillo is a good one. Lazarillo is a good free app that, that kind of emulates Blind Square. So Blind Square is an all singing, all dancing app. It's 30, about 30 quid. Uh, Lazarillo is a free version, which is, is is decent as well, and that's Apple and Android. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I, like Tim said, it's about combinations of stuff. And you know, I mean, I always I always say this as well that um, as a reluctant cane user, I do think as well that there's a, you, you've got to stick your cane into this mix as well, because as much as this technology will interpret the world around you, you there's no substitute for that cane in terms of finding your way around and not tripping over stuff. And I say that as a reluctant cane user, and I, I hope that my robe is listening. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Thanks. Okay. In terms of your synthesizer question as well, Pierre, sorry. Um, you can point it at a screen. It's it's going to pick up on, on text on computer screens, uh, as as will things like Orcam and stuff as well. Um, Obviously, if you if you've got your if your music tech stuff is on a computer, then there's other stuff you can do with your computer in terms of um, having screen readers, and you know there's a whole host of them uh, inbuilt within both Apple and uh, Windows devices, and a whole host yeah. of either free or. No, I'm just thinking for the for the retro LCD screens I've got, like the ones from synthesizers from the '90s. And, ah, right, okay. You know, those kind of ones with Maybe the kind of red digital. with the red digital displays, you're going to struggle. Um, and a you've lot got dials, and you've got LED, LED lights and things around the yeah. wording and things like that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that that's where this tech it struggles because it's, it's either bombarded with information. So you've got a dial on a keyboard that might have six or seven different different words around it. It's going to read them yeah. all out, um, and it's not going to really tell you which one you're pointing at. Um, that's possibly where Be My Eyes comes in. Maybe I don't know if you, if you could do it through Be My Eyes and get somewhere else to actually just interpret well. what they're looking at. Well, even if I get the words in the wrong order, it doesn't. It might still be useful, you know. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just <laughs> give me a, a pointer. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Question from Rover. <laughs> yeah. does, does it recognise dog breeds? Um, well, <laughs> it's, it's quite good on the British breeds, Rover. <laughs> Rover's a bit on the, um, you know, on the combinations. <laughs> Thank you. Who's that? Who's that? Um, okay, we're um, any more questions? We're 11 o'clock now. Um, I'll take one more question before we go and then we'll have a quick summary at the end. Has anybody got any questions before we go? We're all okay. Does anything need explaining? That was if anybody there? needs unmuting, um, put your hand up and I'll have a look. George, George, I think I've spotted your hand. Okay. I can't unmute you though, George. I can ask to unmute you. Okay, no. Okay. Sorry, you're on George. A, say, George, if you're on the computer, Alt and A will unmute you. No. But if you are not. Okay. Never mind, George. <laughs> yeah, what you can do, George, if you can hear us, just contact um, your local site organization. Uh, it's probably one of us six. And we, we can get back to Matt. Um, if you do have a question, 
Okay. So j just give somebody a call. It's absolutely fine. And we'll get your message. Hello, it's George. Can you hear oh, me? Oh, you got it. Got yeah. you, George. Um, has anyone tried the Ira app? No. No. No, no, no of Ira, obviously, because he looks excellent, but not the app, no. All right. Yeah. Just someone mentions it all the time, saying it's really good. I've never got round to... to Can I see you it. there? That, uh, what's, what, what does Ira do? What's it for? Is it is it uh, Apple and Android or? So from what I can work out, it looks like Be My Eyes, but okay, more. It's, it's a paid service, I think. If it's one yeah, of these, I am actually it's here. A paid service. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, yeah. Can this is Dennis? Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Hi, Dennis. Dennis. Yeah, I have been using Ira for since the pilot days, and um, I use it all the time. Um, Basically, it's if you like a professional version of Be My Eyes, in other words, um, it uses trained agents who um, are paid. And the, um, the advantage of that is that... <laughs> Hello, Rover. Uh, the, <laughs> the advantage of that is that you get... Um, Agents who have specific skills that they can use. Um, I mean, you can be out and use it for mobility uh, if you need directing. Um, and some of them have got extremely good computer skills. Some of them have got um, lots of other, other, other skills, but they all have very base. They, they all have um, good sort of training. The disadvantage is that it's a paid service. Um, you can now get free five minute calls. I think it's, um, I think it's three a day. Um, but they also run various offers like, um, last month they had uh, an offer on that you could do, um, organizing. So organizing, labeling, sorting out your computer. I, I could go on about this forever. It might help Pierre. Yeah, um, that's what I was thinking yeah. as well. You said all uh, right. I, mean, I use music tech, so I, you know, I have used them for that. Okay, thank you, Pat. Okay, that's great. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I was thinking um, when we do our next uh, one. Tim, oh, sorry, I'm, John. I'm going to talk to you later. Okay, thank you then, John. Yes. Think, bye, bye, John. I was thinking when we do our next one, which is um, about four or five weeks' time. Maybe it's my turn, by the way. <laughs> maybe we should do something on building on the Be My Eyes and, and doing something on the, the video technologies, maybe. You know, Aero, um, there's quite a few of them actually. Um, or can even, I don't know. Um, but would that be used to anybody? Yeah. Would that, would that be a reasonable yeah. session, you think, if you looked at all, all the different video yes. paid for ones and, and yeah. free ones? And this uh, sort I, of. I, yeah. Sorry, can I interrupt again? I know I'm not part of the organisation, I'm just the user. It's okay. Uh, but I, I, I do have uh, the Envision glasses as well. Oh, do you? Yeah. So um, I have mixed feelings about that, but I, I do have that. So I, I'm interested that you didn't actually mention, or Matt didn't mention, uh, Envision. Uh, it does have, it does have some a advantages. Pair. Yeah, purely down to not having a pair. Um, and so not oh, no, I meant the app. I mean, I mean oh, right. the okay. app itself, yeah, the app, the app's, is the app not a paid for app? Ah, uh, it's a subscription app. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, fair I, enough. I've avoided subscription apps. Before. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's fair comment. I hate. Them. Hello. That's very good. <laughs> Hi, it's George yeah, yeah. from Site fair Concern enough. again. Hi, um, George. I've got the Orcam My Eye too. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. I don't <laughs> use it. <laughs> I, <just> use my, <laughs> I, I use the Sullivan Plus app. It's just. Yeah. Oh right, it's just, it's just easier for well, before you, you have to put your glasses on, and then by the time you've done that, you can get your phone out and do it anyway. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I I've got all cam my eye too as well, and I, I must admit it's kind of seldom used. But I, I went mm. to my parents at the weekend, and the other broad broadsheet newspaper. Uh, and I just put the glasses on, and, and Orcam did a, a, a terrific job with that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think it, I think it's one of those things where you know we we could end up with a whole table full of kit again, uh, and have one <laughs> one thing for different different uh, mm. kind of different activities. Whereas the, the phones seem to do such a good job 
uh, across the board. They do, I, yeah. You know, that, and I'm the same. I, I, mean, I, I prefer seeing AI at the moment, although I am, I'm, I'm loving Sullivan Plus at the moment as well. But, you know, I, I'll, I'll, first of all, it's, it's seeing AI before OrCam. Just not from any, not, no discredit to OrCam, it's, it's a cracking piece of equipment. But it, as you say, you've got to have it with you, charged in your pocket or on your glasses and put glasses back on. Mm. Uh, whereas your phone, your phone tends to always be in your pocket, and I think that's the charge the, doesn't seem to last very long either. No, no, mine's terrible now. Actually, mine, mine only lasts you know minutes rather than anything. Mm. Else. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's, it's different people want different things. I mean, all comes hands free, which is great. Uh, whereas the phone isn't. So if you have if you have dexterity issues, all cam there's a huge selling point for all cam there. You know, so it's it's, it's matching things to individuals, I, I suppose, in terms of yeah. their own abilities yeah. and also what they want to do. Okay. And, uh, sorry, it's Pierre here again. I just had one more question, if you can hear me. Um, just um, with the with things like you were mentioning, um, it can recognise scenes and things. Is there any like app where you can teach the app? You know, like you can because I know a lot of the area around my house because I grew up in this area. So, <laughs> but sometimes I'm not sure. Sometimes, so if I point it, let's say at the post by my house and say, and it says this is a post by the house or something, and uh, I can say I can rewrite that, you know, and say when it when it will see that scene again, it'll say, you know, this is your house. But they haven't maybe they haven't got that far yet. I, I yeah, so, Soundscape does that though. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Soundscape will do that in terms of being able to add your own information to a, a, a existing oh, okay. point. Okay, maybe I'll look at that one. Yeah, it's a freebie Thanks. as well. It's a free app. Yeah, okay. I've got a Trekker yeah. Breeze Plus, uh, mm -hmm. and that that you can put waypoints wherever you want on, on yeah. that as well. So it'll tell you you're outside your house. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. But yeah, I mean, yeah. And, and for me, I suppose we, we get to, mobility is maybe something we need to cover at some stage because there's loads of great mm. mobility apps out there. But, you know, and then you can weigh up things like a, a, a bespoke piece of equipment like Trekker, Trekker Breeze com, compared to, you know, an app like Soundscape or, or Lazarillo or whatever it may be. Yeah, do I still yeah, make I one of the oh, Sorry, one of the difficult things for me is, is, is like you said, when I'm out and about, I have to focus so much on what I hear and avoiding traffic and my cane and all that stuff. So I need a, something which is really, really, uh, easy, won't overwhelm me and just really easy to take out my pocket and doesn't get in the way, you know, like yeah. that's so well, I get confused. But yeah, need, absolutely. So. Do, do, do you use bone conduction headphones? Sorry? Do you use bone conduction headphones? Um, I don't know what they are. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't. There's there's some head, headphones that sit around the back of your head and they sit in front of your ears. So your ears are still free for all the environmental noises that you need to hear in terms of traffic and people and stuff uh, like okay. that. Uh, but they, they yeah. then transmit sound through bone conduction by sitting in front of your ears. Um, there's some really good set called Aftershocks, which is S-H-O-K-Z, I think. Aftershocks, they're really, really good. Um, so that, that would mean, and also it means you can put your phone in your pocket. You don't have to get your phone out because something like Soundscape, um, Line Square, any of the navigation apps, Apple Maps, Google Maps, they'll just run in your pocket. Uh, and then obviously you don't have to kind of navigate them. Uh, so yes. it's worth looking into those. Um, to, just so you okay. can, they play, can they play music as well? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. they can. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> they just, they just don't go in your ear. That's a difference, um, Pierre. They just they go, as Matt said, in front of your ear rather than in your ear. And, and that means okay. you, can, you can do both. You, you can, can have them at a volume you can uh, live with. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> right. I'm going, to, I'm going to call the halt now. Um, we've gone over, which is always a good sign, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. We're, um, well, thank you to the, the six that have helped put this together and, and Visionary. Uh, Lucy, she's gone now, but uh, Visionary is an umbrella organization for organizations. And what we didn't have under Visionary was something for, for our customers, basically, like this. So that's why we put this together for you guys. It's a regular event uh, once a month. And we also have a well being event once a month, at exactly the same time. So your local orgs will tell you, you know, Matt will tell you, or Vicky will tell you, etc. Um, but it's always on. It's always ten o'clock on a Thursday. <laughs> um, so, and, and does anybody um, just? I want to finish on this. Um, is there anything burning or technology-wise that people want to maybe address in a month's time? If not, we'll 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 put something on anyway. If there's anything that is burning that people may want a session on. I've got an Apple TV, and I think that's that's absolutely incredible. 
for for accessibility. Well, that was if the you, new, obviously, the new um, Sky Plus one now, which is quite good as well. That's now. right, yeah. And that's good yeah. voice guidance, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, so television's a possibility there. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to call this a halt now. Um, if the people, the, all, the six of us want to stay on at the end, because sure. uh, we've got more to organise. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so thank you all for coming. And thank you, Matt. It was excellent. And, yeah, and, thank, um, you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank that you. was brilliant. And thank, thank you especially you. to Matt. Thank, thank you. you thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Tim. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.